I'm Dylan Thuris reporting for Atlas Obscura, and I'm here at Gordlandia. And this will all make sense momentarily. Part farm, part workshop, and part art studio, Gordlandia is an otherworldly tribute to the Gord and the brainchild of Graham Otteson. The whole garden is actually just 26 plants. Oh, wow. They're vast. This area here, except for right along the trellis, it's two gourds, like that. And one gourd plant grows how many gourds? Well, it depends on the size. Okay. okay, so if it's the teeny little gourds like that, you can get 200 or more. Yeah, okay. And a couple of years ago, we grew some gourds that were huge, 140 pounds and 126 pounds, and those were the only two on that plant. And that was more than enough for that plant. Oh, my word. Sometimes when people ask me that question, how did you get into gourds? I said, well, why the heck aren't you into gourds? <laughs> they take off like crazy, just like crazy. They are, it's like they're doing the breaststroke across the, the ground. You can almost see them growing. Yeah. I tried once. <laughs> did what? Just did. <laughs> Graham has dedicated her life to growing and transforming gourds into fantastical works of art. And the level of output is staggering. I have ideas that are just flying in my head. And if I was a cabinet maker or a quilter, like what would I do? I'd be working on something for six months and all these ideas would be just like clogging my head. So the pace of it really works for me. This is an African gourd. I believe it's a Nigerian drum. This one is called a Copper Canyon Canteen. Mexican water bottle, Martin House gourd. This is a Chinese bottle, African wine kettle, sub mini. I think it's like a mini Chinese bottle, but even smaller than that. But check this out. This is one gourd. Oh, they're brothers <laughs> or sisters. Oh, there you go. So what is this? Tenacious Tendrils, A Story of Gourds. It's a little book I wrote because people kept asking me about the planting and growing of gourds. So this is one I'm very excited about. Can you picture it like this, this for a lamp? shade on top of something like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are like almost perfectly, almost just, a perfect sphere. And you can t feel that, did you feel that, actually this one's pretty smooth, but um, a lot of them still have some fuzz on them. So oh, yeah, You I can kind of feel that, yeah. It took me a long time to really figure out how to choose a good gourd. I'll see, you know, a long gourd and like I'm thinking that's the base of a lamp or or one that's got a little nose on it and that's gonna be a piggy bank or something like that. Um, but don't count your gourds until they're dried. Not quite. They're so light. You wanna come and get some, some gourds, Dylan? Yeah. I'll get you. That's a good assortment. It's pretty self-explanatory. Right. Dylan, you just um, wash. It's sad. It very seems pretty satisfying. It's it like is. painting a room or something. Like when you're done, you're like, oh yeah. Yeah. The texture of these is really so beautiful. And this, uh, yours is like... Yeah, this is a, this that's is a gorgeous. phenomenal gorgeous. It's yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's really actually like uncovering treasure because you can almost, you, you start to see these ripples. Check this one out. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? And that doesn't show up until you, you, you get wash all it. that. Yeah. All right, sometimes... I'm all excited about some design or some project and I want to carve and sometimes it's just fun to wash gourds. Can there be something that grows on the gourds that is bad? I mean, can they get moldy in a way that's like, oh. Well, every now and then uh, something has gotten into the gourd that makes it smell awful. Do you have <laughs> any idea of what it is? No, but I'm glad it doesn't happen very often because it's hard to get rid of that smell. <laughs> wow! This is a lot 
lot of gourds. This is crazy. I think of it as my palate. I love these perfect. I, I don't know. I mean, they're sort of simple, but like these perfectly. That's spherical. those are called cannonball gourds. That. I find the naming to be quite literal about these <laughs> gourds. They're not. There's not a lot of like dancing around. I love completing a piece. Like when I turn a lamp on, or when I put the eyes in a in a creature or something like that. I just love that. We're gonna put ink on the gourd, and okay. we're gonna heat set the, the ink. <laughs> no, I'm slow. This is such like pleasant kind it's of. Right it's just like you take this thing, you transform it into a more beautiful version of itself. It's like kind of meditative. Yeah. Like yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. Then the next step is to heat set it. So we're just basically just drying it and making it hot at the same time. So you want to be pretty close to it. And also, I forgot oh. to tell you. Just I'll tell you now. These get really, really hot. That that heat tool shouldn't be uh -oh. doing that. Yeah, that's not good at all. Uh, you know, it just strikes me again and again that you can grow this in your garden. You know, you can grow your peas and you can grow your carrots and there's your kale. And there's something that you can turn into a basket in which to put your carrots and peas and kale. I mean, how incredibly generous is that? That just blows me away. Oh, oh no! That's okay! The blade! You broke a blade! No problem. Oh, oh no! <laughs> what happened there? Um, it broke again. Look ahead where you're aiming. What? Watch, watch the blade, not, not the rest of the saw. Watch right where the blade is going. Okay. Got it? I think so. Way to go! Where do you think you are on your path to understanding gourds and what can be done with them? There was a woman who came by here a while back and she works with um, a local green cemetery. And she was wondering if I could make a gourd urn. Your question made me think of that, devoting a lifetime to it because you could like, you could end up in a gourd. It's a possibility. I think this thing is, uh, is done. It's done. I think this is done. I completely, completely understand the addictive nature of this work. There's so many different parts of the process and each one is, uses a slightly different skill. You're not like doing one thing over and over and over. But at the end of a few hours, you have this kind of very special, so I can right. see how yeah. that Quick turnaround. Yeah. I want my own gourd. <laughs> I, you want to grow some gourds? Yeah, I can I give you some seeds. I will. We. I. I, I, I. We. I would love to try and grow yeah. some gourds. And who wrote the Gourdlandia anthem? I wrote the Gourdlandia anthem. Can you tell us to the tune up? Let's hear it. Yeah. Gourdlandia, home of the twisted vine. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 that's perfect. <laughs> Tendrils are sweet and for so very far. What this time here has shown me is how incredible it is to just immerse yourself in one little corner of the world and how that grows to become an entire universe filled with all kinds of magic and wonder. And the joy in coming and spending this time with Graham and learning about gourds and making gourds is just an absolute delight. I love it here. It is filled with these incredible growing things. It is, uh, it is this magical place. <laughs> This. I, this is amazing. There's nothing better. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming to Gordlandia. And uh, click to subscribe and tell me what gourd art you would make. What would you build out of gourds? <laughs>